Hello folks, I'm Mark Richards, an engineer on the Firebase Crashlytics team, and I'm excited to talk to you today about the recent improvements to Crashlytics for Unity. As a mobile game developer, debugging issues like memory corruption or a missing GPU feature can be complex and time-consuming. And a game that constantly glitches can leave your players feeling frustrated and drive down your App Store rating. In fact, quality issues are the most common reason for early app deletion. One in five users, 19%, will uninstall an app due to technical errors or crashes, and 54% of one-star app reviews mention app stability as a concern. That's why we've made a few updates to Crashlytics to make it easier to improve your game's stability. Crashlytics is a crash reporting tool available for Unity as part of the Firebase SDK for Unity. It provides an intuitive web console so you can monitor your app stability, understand your bugs, and prioritize what to fix. If you are new to Crashlytics, here's a look at one of our console pages. You see there's a number of graphs showing the stability of your app and a list of all recent crashes and errors, sorted by frequency. You can click into those issues and get full stack traces for all similar crashes and see lots of other useful data about the state of the app at the time of the error. Crashlytics is widely used across the Android and iOS ecosystems, including in lots of Unity games. We've made three major Unity-specific improvements in the past several months that we feel makes Crashlytics the best option for crash reporting for mobile games. First, we brought great IL2CPP support to Crashlytics to get more actionable stack traces in the dashboard. Second, we made big improvements to issue prioritization so you can quickly identify, prioritize, and debug issues in your game before they affect your users. And lastly, we've added Unity-specific crash metadata for those tricky problems where the stack trace doesn't give you the whole picture. I'm going to start off by introducing our new IL2CPP support and then hand it over to my colleague Sam to cover the other two improvements we've made. A few years back, Unity introduced IL2CPP as an option for your game's scripting backend. It is now the default option, which comes with performance benefits, since it uses compiled instead of interpreted code. But for crash reporting, IL2CPP presented many challenges. Let's dig into IL2CPP's compilation process to see why. As the name suggests, IL2CPP transpiles your c -sharp code into C++ code. So now, even though you wrote your game code in c -sharp, the app is actually executing code that was built from C++ source. That source was automatically generated from your c -sharp code. That's the first step of the process. On Android and iOS, this generated C++ code is directly compiled on the respective platform using the iOS and Android build tools. So under the hood, your Unity app is built using Gradle for Android and Xcode for iOS. Again, your c -sharp code is not compiled by these tools. They compile the generated C++ code instead. The result is that IL2CPP apps will run native libraries on Android and iOS rather than interpreted code. In fact, when you export your Unity game to Xcode or Android Studio, you can actually inspect the C++ source files that the IL2CPP compiler generated. If you had a raw stack trace from your Unity app, you'd probably need to look at the C++ code to figure out what part of your C-sharp code caused the issue. So with IL2CPP as our scripting backend, let's talk about what the crash reporting experience was like before we made improvements to support it. Let's start with crash reporting on Android. Looking back, Crashlytics for Unity used to only include our standard Java-based Crashlytics Android SDK. By default, Unity handles native crashes by wrapping them in a Java exception. The result is that Crashlytics has always received IL2CPP crash reports because Crashlytics can handle these Java objects. This sounds great, but in practice, the contents of the crash leave a lot of room for improvement. Imagine your app crashed with the older version of Crashlytics for Unity. The stack trace in your Crashlytics console might look like this. It is a native exception represented as a Java exception. In a typical Java exception, the stack frame names are the method names, which makes debugging quite simple. However, because these are wrapped native crashes, the stack frames are raw, unsymbolicated memory addresses. Looking at the stack trace, figuring out what part of your code caused this crash would be really tricky. Now, you might be able to make use of the memory addresses with some hacking and manual pointer resolution, but it isn't straightforward. If you're like me and you prefer your stack traces have actual symbol names, I have great news for you. The latest version of the Crashlytics SDK for Unity on Android comes bundled with an upgraded 
NDK Crash Reporter. This brings lots of improvements for Android C++ crash reporting to Unity for handling IL-2 CPP crashes. Previously, integrating Crashlytics NDK crash reporting into your Unity game wasn't officially supported, and it required some clunky steps to modify your exported Android Studio project. Now, not only is Android NDK crash reporting supported, it is part of the Crashlytics SDK for Unity by default. Also, to get symbolicated stack traces, Crashlytics servers need symbol information from your native library. That information is typically stripped from the binaries before the app is compiled. We've recently integrated Android native symbol uploads into the Firebase CLI, so now you have a convenient, supported way to upload these symbol files needed to symbolicate your Android IL-2 CPP stack frames at build time. Even when Unity generates multiple symbol files, uploading them to Crashlytics is just a command line call away. And for developers who use native plugins in your game, you can upload their symbols using the same tool. The result? Remember that stack trace of raw addresses we looked at before? Here are much more helpful C++ stack traces from this updated version of our SDK for Unity. This is a huge improvement over Java-based crashes, as there are line numbers and actual method names. Now, instead of needing to hand resolve a bunch of symbol addresses to figure out what is in the stack trace, you can directly see where each frame points to in the C++ source code. But there's still one problem. These frames correspond to the generated C++ code, which you didn't write. So there's still some hurdles making it difficult to find the exact place in your c -sharp code responsible for the issue. We fixed that too, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, now that I've shown you some Android improvements, I also want to touch on similar improvements on the iOS side. Crashlytics for Unity on iOS has always had native crash reporting out of the box, but often your stack traces would have missing frames, as you can see here. Again, we're seeing frames that lack meaningful symbol information, which makes it difficult to pinpoint the root cause of the issue in your app. This occurs because Crashlytics doesn't have access to Unity framework symbols. But regardless of the reason, this is a frustrating thing to see in the Crashlytics console. Good news, we've recently revamped the Crashlytics SDK for Unity to automatically upload these symbols for iOS apps, so you'll now see fully symbolicated frames as shown on the right. So those are our IL2CPP specific improvements. If you have never used Crashlytics before, or have relied on it heavily but been frustrated by its limitations in IL2CPP apps, you can see the benefits of these changes right away by getting the latest version of Crashlytics today. Now, I'll hand it over to my colleague Sam to cover the other two Unity-specific improvements we've made to help you get the most out of Crashlytics. Hi, I'm Sam Edson, another engineer on Crashlytics, and I'm going to talk about other areas where we've improved crash reporting for Unity developers. We know one of the challenges of debugging IL-2 CPP crashes is converting the generated C++ code back to the C-sharp code you wrote for your game. We've made enhancements to IL-2 CPP crash reporting to make stack traces more readable. We call this system stack trace prettification. Mark talked previously about how we can now see C++ stack traces for your apps. However, one problem with raw IL-2 CPP stack traces is you'll still have trouble mapping them back to our c -sharp code. Well, we've introduced new smarts into our pipeline to do that mapping for you. So let's say you're met with this crash in your Unity game. Normally you'd see this stack trace. This might be difficult to read though, because it involves parsing the C++ in your head. If you look closely, you can see IL2CPP encodes a C-sharp class and method name in the function name. When your crash goes through prettification, you get a much clearer picture of where the problem is in the C-sharp code you wrote. With these changes, you can now easily map the stack trace back to your code and quickly diagnose issues in your game. Now that we've covered how to easily find the root cause in your stack trace, let's move on to how to prioritize your crashes. Once you start getting a lot of crashes, you're going to need a way to know which ones are the most important to tackle. You can do this in Crashlytics via the issues list shown here, which is the front page of the Crashlytics dashboard. Previously, Unity apps were prone to an issue we call overgrouping. Too much overgrouping means unrelated crashes show up as the same issue in this list. In the worst case, all your crashes will show up as one mega issue that you need a page through to find the real issues. 
This makes it hard to see whether issues have multiple root causes or just one. I'm excited to share that our team has been hard at work measuring and tuning the overgrouping factor for Unity apps, so now you can tell when your crash is rare or affecting many users. We now cluster on more appropriate frames, which gives you a hint for which line in your stack trace actually caused the problem. Also, we specifically target the C-sharp code you write instead of engine library code, making the stack traces even more relevant. And best of all, these improvements don't just apply to crashes. They also apply to non-fatal errors and exceptions thrown from your game scripts. Now let's move on to our last area of improvement, which is crash metadata. Have you ever had a problem that only impacts certain devices or screen sizes? For example, an issue with some graphics cards missing a critical feature that your game depends on? Well, developers used to log this data themselves via Crashlytics custom keys. And custom keys are great for adding context to a crash, but now we're delighted to announce we'll automatically include hardware and operating system metadata so you can easily look for patterns across your sessions to debug those tricky crashes. This helps free up your time to focus on building features your players love. So that concludes our talk on enhancements to Crashlytics for Unity. To recap, we walk through Crashlytics IL2 CPP support and multiple improvements to stack trace quality. Then we covered how we improved grouping for related crashes, making identifying and prioritizing issues in your app a breeze. Lastly, we talked about additions to crash metadata, which makes fixing tricky crashes easier. All of this is to say, debugging issues in complicated games can be daunting. Crashlytics is here to help you take control of your app stability. If you want to try out all these awesome features, navigate to firebase.google.com. Thank you.